Yeah, hello and welcome. So with this uh, video, what we're going to do is start off with like the simple closed economy model, that classical economy in the long run, sometimes called the aggregate uh, model, aggregate economy model. Um, we're going to start off at equilibrium. We're going to have some sort of shock to the model, in this case a fiscal contraction, and then I'll show you how to use the model to see the effect of that fiscal contraction. Uh, in a previous video, I had I went over just kind of a broad overview of the model, so I'll be sure to link to that in the video description if you want to kind of review that. So let's deal with a fiscal contraction. So starting off just kind of with a review of what's going on in this model. Um, this is the market for loanable funds. So you have um, a supply of loanable funds here, and the supply is defined by national savings, so S sub 1. So national savings is equal to uh, real incomes, you know, Y, something called output of production, short all the things that uh, people spend their money on. So consumption, which is a function of disposal income, you know, incomes, less taxes, uh, and government spending. So savings, national savings is the difference between all the income minus all the things that people spend their money on. Uh, so that's our little supply here. Uh, since all of these things are kind of considered fixed in this model, we just have a... a you know, straight line for savings um, because there's a fixed amount of savings. The investment line, investment curve, is this downward sloping curve reflecting the fact that at high levels of real interest rates, the horizontal axis is real interest rates, um, firms will choose to borrow a small amount of money and so investment will be low. Uh, the reason why is at high real interest rates, the cost of borrowing is high and so firms want to not borrow quite as much, so investment's low. Whereas uh, at low real interest rates, firms uh, will borrow more and invest more because the cost of borrowing is relatively low. So you have this kind of downward slope, downward sloping shape for the demand for loanable funds here, reflecting the fact that you know firms respond to the cost of borrowing. Uh, and then this economy is going to equilibrate. The real interest rate here is going to be um, equilibrium where the supply of loanable funds equals the demand for loanable funds. Okay, so what's the effect of a fiscal expansion? Well, fiscal, sorry, fiscal contraction. Fiscal contraction can come in two forms. Either government spending could go down um, or taxes could go up. The, basically, a fiscal, expan fiscal contraction uh, is a situation where the government budget surplus, or sorry, the government budget where the government budget balance improves. So the, where the government budget is the difference between taxes um, and spending, basically that difference has improved. So they either increased taxes or they've decreased government spending. Okay, so what's the effect of that, gov of that fiscal expand contraction? So you know either reducing government spending or increasing taxes. The effect uh, is, well, let's have a look at the, this equation for national savings. So if government spending goes down, there's a negative sign in front of here. So if government spending goes down, that means the savings increases. Uh, you could also tell that through the tax, where taxes fit into this equation. So consumption, C here, is a function of disposable income, the difference between how much money consumers get and how much they have to spend in taxes. So if taxes go up, um, there's a negative sign in there. So taxes have gone up. So disposable income uh, has gone down. So if disposable income has gone down, that means uh, the savings has gone up. So either way, savings has gone up. So how do we show that? Well, we show that with a shift out in the savings schedule. So savings were at this S sub 1 line, and now they're at S sub 2. Uh, and we're adding subscripts to the things that are changing. So this, just to indicate that this is the in initial savings schedule, and this is our new savings schedule, we have uh, an S sub 1 and S sub 2. We could also add in, you know, a little arrow, and on your exam or problems as you probably should. So we started at this saving schedule, and now we're at this saving schedule. So the new equilibrium real interest rate is going to be the point where um, the supply for loanable funds equals the demand for loanable funds, and I'm going to label that R sub two, just because that clearly shows the change. And then we're going to add in uh, an I sub two there for the new uh, investment level. So uh, what can we conclude from this? Well, we could conclude that um, the real interest rate has gone down from this initial equilibrium to the new equilibrium. Uh, and then we could also conclude that uh, investment is going to go up 
starting from uh, this level to this level. So that implies that uh, the real interest rate is going to decrease and investment is going to increase. And then for intuition, well, you know, what, how can we think this might work without looking at a model? Um, how it might work would be if the government does something, so fiscal contraction, they do something to um, basically give consumers more money. Excuse me. Excuse me. The fiscal contraction is increasing savings, right? So no matter how this fiscal contraction comes about, either government spending has gone down or taxes have gone up, there's this surplus or this extra savings that's in the economy. So this extra savings sitting there in this closed economy, savings has to go somewhere. You know, it's not going to go sit into a bank account that's earning absolutely nothing. Um, you're going to put that savings to some kind of productive use. So in this really simple closed economy, there's one place to go. There's this market for loanable funds. Um, and the market of loanable funds means you take your savings, you put it into some investment thing where firms borrow it, and they pay you that real interest rate R. So if there's this extra savings in the market, um, this surplus of savings, that's that expansion of the supply curve. Uh, and if there's this extra glut of savings on the market, that's going to obviously increase the amount of savings because there's more savings on the market implies that there's you know a greater supply of these loanable funds. Um, and then having this extra savings on the market kind of implies that any particular savings, you know, it's it's valued a little bit less than it is otherwise. So in the same way that any market would work, so like say in the market for corn, if there's just a whole bunch of extra corn on the market, uh, so that's an expansion of the supply of corn, any particular corn is going to be worth less. You'd expect the value, the price of the corn to go down. Same thing here with the market for savings. There's an expansion in the supply of savings. So the value of any particular savings, uh, the, the price that uh, firms are willing to pay in terms of the real interest rate is going to be less. And so you would expect the real interest rate to go down. Um, that was my best stab at intuition, but if you want to stick to the diagram and the equations, that's awesome too. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. If you found this video helpful, you know, if you wouldn't mind clicking the like button. Uh, thanks and have a good day. Bye.